one year since we launched this crazy thing, and uh, uh, yeah, we I you know we're thinking about trying to get some special guests, and we are super honored to have joining us uh, via Skype right now. Uh, author of the Song of Ice and Fire series, we have George R.R. R. Martin here with us right now to talk about Massive Chalice. George, uh, so great to have you here. How's it going? George, uh, we're really, like, super honored to, to have you on the show. Like, you are a huge inspiration to us, and, you know, a lot of the, like, bloodlines and, like, the lineage of Massive Chalice, like, you know, we really took a lot of inspiration from uh, Game of Thrones. It's really awesome. Oh, really? Uh, that's great, Brad. I can't wait to tell my lawyer it's all about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, that's not the only place where we've been drawing it from. You know, like, there's other games like Final Fantasy Tactics, uh, you know, XCOM. Like, we, you know, we really... <laughs> I ghost wrote both those games, Brad. Maybe for next game, you should think about doing a courtroom simulation. I can help you out with the research. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, George, you are uh, you are a riot. Uh, so, how's that new book coming? The uh, Winds of Winter. Like, when when are we gonna get our hands on that thing? Uh, like I've been saying, it's finished. It's been finished for ten years. I've just been working out the last line is going to be. Hey, would you like an exclusive preview of the last line? Wait, seriously? You got you guys. This is amazing. George R R Martin is gonna reveal the final line of the upcoming Winds of Winter right here on the Master Jealous Team Stream. Yeah. yeah. Okay, go, go for it. Let it rip. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> Amazing. All right, uh, George R. R. Martin, everybody. Thanks for uh, getting here. Hey, George, uh, one last thing. Would you like to uh, give away a code, a uh, $100 copy of Master Chalice to, to one of the viewers right now? If you did, of course. I'd uh, fix my hat first and my black-on-black -black vest. Just one second. Okay. <laughs> How do you operate this thing? Is this DOS? I only work in DOS. DOS is how I focus my writing. No, no, no. There's a DOS, there's a DOS client for Twitch. Yeah. One moment. You're, it's, you got it? D-I-R. Okay. L-F. Right. C-L-F. Okay. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why don't we do so it? If you're on the screen, please, uh, uh, I guess, what, what do you say, Brad? What do you say to these people? Uh, what is this? You, uh, is this spam? Just, do they eat just spam? Pick, they yeah. eat spam. Yeah. They, no, they like spam. They're all okay. Hawaiian. Okay. Let's oh. do it. Oh, yeah. Give it to a nice Hawaiian man. Okay. All or right. Or a woman. Spam it on me. Spam it on me. George R. R. Martin wants your spam on this. On, on this. Okay. Okay, Brad. Um, hmm. According to that sexy man you had sitting here earlier, uh, his name is Andrew, uh, I, what I need is, uh, much like my Khaleesi, um, sure. I need him to call it. Uh, and if I, I can't arrive, if you know what I'm saying, unless he calls it. Sure, sure. Okay, so, uh, uh, I will call it. So I'm going to say Khaleesi, call, call, call it. Call Drogo style. Oh, oh, God. Right now. Man. Okay, right now. All right, it looks like uh, J Haji, J underscore Haji. J Haji. Congrats. Congrats. All right, let's, uh, let's quickly check in with Chad. <laughs> let's go check in with Chad, see how he's doing over here um, on his playthrough of the game. Chad, how are you doing? Nice, all right. Um, you see, I got some old, old members on my team, age 60, 64, 50. This is still sort of my first generation. So kind of your core group of characters is starting right. to age. They're starting out to age. Right I'm now. starting to think okay. maybe working in, you know, some young characters, to replace them. Um, I'm actually having a bit of a population problem with the game. Like I thought, the two queen makers at first had all daughters. Sure. Or kingmaker had all sons. Sure. Finally, I got that Chad Lee character his own house. There was one And he's a queen maker? The, he's a queen maker. But okay, there's one woman left for him to marry, and she is 45. So probably a few kids, but not a whole lot of kids left in her lifespan. So let's hope she gets some daughters and they can come up, up and coming. Um, fielding my tactical party now, I only have about seven to choose from, so I can't really afford for any Interesting. to die. I so. saw you earlier out of the corner of my eye putting, filling up the Scholar's Guild full. That was probably not the right You have any regrets from, that, from doing that? Well, it was all from my first Caber Jack house, and even though I had a pretty good lineage, I got some unlucky rolls, and most of the kids were asthmatic and slow, and they would do good in the Scholar's Guild. Maybe not on the battlefield, but good in the Scholar's <laughs> Guild. But at this point, I'd take any scrub on the battlefield, so I should have saved a couple. Research, I'm researching Hunter Stealth Armor, which should let me stealth anywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to have, but an extra... Man, foot on the field would be better. 
So uh, we'll see. Um, this guy's a little hurting. It's a, he's out of action points. Um, I've been using some guys to heal each other, which this character might do. It's always a call with, whether you take out the enemy or yeah. you heal your guy. Yeah, because if um, you miss, that's going to put you in a super bad spot. So I got, I got two guys here. This guy has no health back, so he's just going to go in for the hit. Um, maybe he'll kill it. Oh, glancing blow. See, and that right there, that's like, I think that's a perfect example of the kind of like turn planning that we want people to be doing. Right, exactly. Know? So I used him first. If he would have killed it, great. He didn't. So now this guy could do a standard shot. Three to five damage, it has four. 63%. It's a little risky because he's probably going to go after one of these caber jacks. Yeah. And he could kill this one with this shot. So I'm going to go ahead and heal this guy. But thinking about it, I should have actually shifted around. Yeah, because now they're he's in the gonna position to get grenaded. Of it. Oh, he didn't, he didn't do it, though. Yeah, oh. he only hit that one guy. So uh, it's a close battle, and this is only the beginning. I've only wiped out two little guys, uh, a couple of packs. A bomber so you guy. Got, you got more to go there. through. So huh? I'm about a third of the way through this battle, probably, maybe half. OK. All right, sweet. We're going to leave you, leave you to it. We're going to bring out our final guest, uh, final guest on the show today. Um, long time Double Fine employee, longer than myself. Um, uh, an, a 3D artist here. Yeah, I don't know. Been working, it's, working his way up from being an intern and then being an artist and then being a senior artist. And there's Chris Petrowski over there. Hey, buddy, you're totally blowing my intro. Get out of here. So this next gentleman I'm about to bring out, my good friend, uh, longtime 3D artist here, uh, Jeff Solis. Come on out, lead artist of Massive Chalice. You're Welcome Solis? to the show, sir. Oh, yeah, that's where the guests sit. We put the, uh, hey. the co-host on the other thing. Just left and I just missed oh, it. man, you missed it. It was amazing. That's why the seat's so warm. Yeah, that's just my fat ass on there. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's make this quick because I need to get more booze in my body. I know, yeah, we actually, I feel like we did not prep appropriately. <laughs> Jeff, and we, um, didn't need his candy. And we kind of, we kind of ran out of booze. And that's, uh, that is our next destination after this. So, um, yeah, let's, so I'm trying to think if there are things that we, uh, we have not talked about yet. So, uh, Jeff, we have worked together forever. We worked together on Brutal Legend, then we worked together in Iron Brigade, then we worked together on... Wait, Brazen. Psychonauts. You guys were on Psychonauts. Oh, shit. We worked together on Psychonauts yeah. before that. Yeah, we worked together on Psychonauts, Brutal Legend, then Iron Brigade, then Brazen. Um, then some, there was some secret it's stuff secrets. that we worked on. Secrets that we can't <laughs> tell anybody about. That have been locked in the uh, Indiana Jones-style <laughs> vault. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Yeah. You probably don't want to open one of those things anyway. Your face will uh, not be your face after a while. So um, it, one of them's pretty awesome, just like the Ark of the Covenant, awesome. though. One of them is pretty awesome. Yeah. The other one will melt your face. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and then this sucker. So it's like, yeah, I feel like we've been working together forever. Um, yeah. Also, things are starting to really devolve out there. It's totally, totally <laughs> madness in Double Fine headquarters. So uh, yeah, are there like? So we've talked a lot about like what people like about the game and don't like about the game and what they're looking forward to. Like what um what are you what are you looking forward to about like like where the game is headed, where it's at now, like and what what we're you know what's going on. Um, I, I really like and I think Chad's running into it now. I think the thing that's the most unique about our game is this sort of meta strategy layer where you're 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 dealing with the population and like how many people you have and like oh I'm actually worrying about the number of you know, childbearing age people that I have, and uh oh, I've got all ladies. Uh, <laughs> I call that a party, my friend. <laughs> Let the not childbearing happen. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's that's super unique. Um, very like I think the only other game that I've ever had that 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 type of thing with is um, oh, what, what's that that uh, Chris Remo was playing a lot with Ragnar and. Uh, Oh, Crusader Kings. Crusader Kings. Crusader Kings. Yes, Crusader Kings. Yep. The only other game. I'm like EverQuest 2. No, it's shit. <laughs> I should say Crusader Kings 2, because Crusader Kings yep. is uh, like fucking. Much different experience. Yeah. If you like DOS games, then you'll like Crusader Kings. And I'm probably going to get a lot of rage for that. But Crusader Kings 2 <laughs> is awesome. And it has a lot of that same thing. Real, you're like, 
well, I gotta marry this old general so he doesn't leave. Time to marry him to my 14-year-old daughter. And then it gets all real creepy and And it's weird. creepy, yeah. And there's something like, <laughs> man, that was, um, that should have been on the top 10 cards that I was, I was spitting out earlier. <laughs> creepy marriages. Uh, creepy marriages, yeah. Like, that's, it's something that I, I think we need to bump up the, um, the eligible age for putting a hero in your ready. So, so the way that it works is that, um, for the viewers, is that as a hero's being trained, once they're 15, they get put into your, they're eligible to fight. And right now, the way the rules work to make it s as simple as possible is that like, if you're eligible to fight, you're eligible to get married and be put into a keep. And that's, that can get a little <laughs> creepy when you have an 85-year-old man and then you have a 15-year-old girl. It's a little, little weird. So I think that we're gonna bump that up to like 18 <laughs> and then it's still creepy, but at least it's like yeah. less creepy? I don't know. Those are the kinds <laughs> of things that we've been battling with. It's like- That's how Jeff rolls. He I think he just embraced the creepy it. and then yeah. like- I mean, I think that- You judge the person <laughs> who just does nothing but marry old dudes to young yeah, girls. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's, I, I do think that it's interesting how- <laughs> Is there how, a gym for that? Yeah. <laughs> I do think that it's interesting that there are some decisions that you make that do make you reflect on yourself as a person. Like, <laughs> like it might be tactically correct to do that, but like, are you okay doing it as a person? You know, yeah. it, like Brad, may yeah. I interject? Yes. Solar Blitz just said an ephibophile is a is a true word. Love of teenagers, which is sort of creepy too. That's really creepy. I've never heard of that. Ephibophile. Greek Phoebos uh, meaning teenager Jeff Solis. <laughs> That's really gross. Yeah. Unique word. Teenager like four times over. We have not been teenagers for a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah That's, I mean, that. That's unfortunate. I mean, mentally, probably. <laughs> yeah, but, no. <laughs> Are you kidding me? We're barely double digits, my friend. <laughs> Are there so I thought I thought we would also go through some of the um some of the stuff that you've been doing over thing. I feel like we haven't had you on the team streams in a while, and you've been doing like a lot of like just like we're Well, you've we're, probably seen a lot of it with Chad playing. Like all the levels have been beefed out. And we can totally go through some of these. Are there any, so we have launchers to all the levels. Ooh. Go to some game. of the keeps. Those are probably the newest things. No, 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 no. I'm not shutting you down. We got, man, we have the technology, Chad. Yeah, we're going to blow your game up. We have the technology. So this one is the Alpine keep. And I think this is really awesome. Um, I think it actually sets up a, yes, it does. So the idea when the, when the keeps get attacked is that you're going to actually send in sort of your standard five-man squad um, to, to like defend it, but you're actually trying to protect the, uh, the regent and the partner will show up as well. So over here, so this right here, like the, the whole idea, I'm gonna turn the fog of war off real quick so we can look at it. The whole idea <laughs> when you said that DF Dan, Dan in the uh, chat goes, F6 Brad, F6, <laughs> F6, F6. Um, yeah, like like the whole idea between <laughs> behind this keep is that it actually lives on top of this like mountain in the, in the Alpine region. Um, and yeah, the idea is that this right here is actually going to be like a spiral staircase downward into. Kind yeah, of I didn't the put the staircase room, right? in there yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> polish, polish face, polish face. It's a secret staircase. <laughs> so, That's so this one, this, is on this one is unique in that you're actually just gonna, you're kind of fighting on the rooftop. You're not actually fighting like in the throne room and stuff. And um, yeah, I think that this one is is like really awesome. There's like lots of bridges that that come into it, um, and there's like a forested area on the outside. A lot of the Moai heads and stuff are around there, and yeah, I think that this is one of the most rad ones that we have. It's like sweet courtyard, and it's awesome. And yeah, anything you want to add to this? Oh, this is a nice looking tree. Yeah, it's also not Alfang out. I so. just it's like, <laughs> is it not? It's yeah, not. That's a bug. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, that's bad. Uh, you don't want that. Awesome. No, uh, uh, I, it's it's always fun like taking a white box level to something that's more than just a white box. Um, and you know, there's obviously a lot more polish that needs to go into these, but it's, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's always, that's like one of the favorite parts of my job is like, sort of coming up with a fiction of like what the level is in your own head, mm -hmm. and before you start like laying out the space. And it is like that's the kind of thing where um, we are on kind of a tight timeline, and we don't have time to just sit around pontificating about what is the coolest possible location. So I think <laughs> a lot of what we do at DF, it's like, because we're, I mean, we're trying to be like original in all aspects if we can, as many as we can at least, I, I guess. And uh, yeah, it's like there's not a lot of time often to just sit around and talk about like, okay, for this one specific level, what is the best thing? Let's have a huge brainstorming session mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. So I think a lot of it just falls to like the artists that are actually creating the assets. You just like, man, it's like, I don't know, like what's cool? And then you'll like have a sweet idea and you're already half done modeling it. And I'm like, yeah, that is totally sweet. <laughs> like we should totally do that. 
So this one's At least sweet. that's how we hope it works. At least that's, yeah, that's, that's how we hope it works. Because I'm like, this is awesome. And then you're like, oh, man, who's doing some crayon drawings over there? <laughs> There's the, uh, the dry sea keep. Um, the dry sea keep. So this is the, uh, the the keep in the dry sea region. Like this is another cool one that's been um, still still <laughs> Except a couple for that of, part. There's still a couple of temp pieces, <laughs> but it's kind of red, and uh, you won't be able to move the camera this far out. But it's kind of sweet that you know you see a lot of the sand dunes, the stuff that you see, and the the kind of standard stuff. But then it's mostly indoors. But there are these awesome um, these awesome like terrariums of the uh, yeah. of all of the plant life that's in the thing. And of course, like I don't know. Why, other than like it's a video game and it's like fucking cool, <laughs> is that they have like yeah, these really a, sweet. It's a big yeah. outdoor, you know, it's a very open and arid place. And so, the old oh, no, no, style. the terrarium still really makes sense. The, where I was going with that, the fact that there are the exploding plants in the terrarium. Oh, yeah. Are like, why are these here? Someone, some homeowner was like, you know what I want? Fucking exploding yeah, plants I want, right in my goddamn uh, I want forum. exploding plants right in these things. Just because, so, a, you know what it just because a plant's poisonous doesn't mean you don't have it in your garden. True, right? yeah. true. All right. Hey, Brad, that's a funny thing. Like, And actually, Jeff, this may be more for a question for you. Like, When you place things like this, when you... Do you have to just like give that kind of mentality up when you're like, of course, like fictionalize in your mind, like some homeowner has this, it's their it's their atrium to their outdoor, and they put an exploding plant inside of it. Like, I mean, I mean, we course. don't know. Maybe those exploding p plants are like super tasty. You know, like maybe they <laughs> cure asthma. Huh? <laughs> Who's with me? Yes, they cure it by killing the person. Yes, <laughs> it's a cure, man. I didn't say it was a good cure. <laughs> And yeah, this is another one of those situations. I'm I'm super excited for these to happen, like in the playthroughs where people are, um, you know, they're really stressed out about defending these two characters, you know. And this is actually awesome. This is actually the very chair that you see in the. I think that, you know, I think we need to move this locator over here so that the regent starts in front of the chair, <laughs> and then the partner is off to the left like they are in the view. That'll be awesome. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be really great, uh, and the, we're going to be working on this next month, the actual scripting for a defense mission, how it works. And the idea, I think, that what we're going to try is that all of these enemies, they'll know where the throne room is. They'll know where the, um, where the heroes are, the regent and the partner, and they'll be coming in specifically trying to take them out. And so yeah. you'll, have this, you'll have this cool mission, hopefully a cool mission, where uh, your party's separated, and you'll be trying to hustle these guys across the map, engage some enemies, and take them out, and then try to like link up your, your two groups. I think it's going to be yeah. really great. Wow. Um, but yeah, this I, I really, really like the way that this one's coming across. Um, and uh, yeah, having the exploding plants in there, even though it, it might not make sense, is just awesome. <laughs> just because they're a great part of like this, uh, this region, and it's something that you should, I think that you should expect Every time, you know, every time yeah. you go into a mission in that region, whether it's in the keep or not, it should have those exploding plants. It just adds to the character of the region. Uh, yeah, they're the first best thing. Rest? Oh, first relic. Are you hooking it up? Man, right that's now? like what three hours in. Damn. Oh yeah, sure, Chad. Tell them only the good news. What's the bad news that happened? Oh well, the good news is Freddie Vaughn died. Oh what? <laughs> that's um, the bad news, Chad. Okay, we're we're flipping it's, over. So it's we a can mix see it of too. good and bad news. Uh, Let's see. So you've got okay. So you've got this is awesome. So Freddie Vaughn here died. Freddie Vaughn died, and he created a, his his caber is now he known got as really high level six, pretty good for yeah. level one guy. Very Vaughn's are good at that. And his relic is uh, now known as the rake. But we have a problem. He has no heirs. <laughs> Put that in the trash. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> the rake A is my stage name. B is my amazing caber, and now I have no heirs. Was I ambitious or something? Really. Uh, <laughs> you just didn't. You never wed. You never got Why a kid. Why didn't you oh, name your kids, Chad? It said arthritis and asthmatic. You know, like I didn't want to Stag pass that on. Stag to the so. end, man. <laughs> you know, that's how I roll. That's how the Vons roll. But he'll be remembered. The rake. You know, players like, code. Someone will find it a thousand years from now and remember. Freddie oh, Vaughn. What is happening? Freddie Vaughn. <laughs> It's not like a doo -wop if you do not bestow these relics, they will be sealed inside the tomb. Are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> it's okay. It's Bye, it's relics. Gone. It's gone forever. <laughs> All right, so, so we actually have a first pass on every level that we're intending to ship with the first version of the game. Yes. Which is fantastic. Like, um, we, yeah, we've got a pass on everything, so that's great. We have two versions of... And we have um, some good ideas to, like, mix it up, too, so... There's exactly more yeah. layouts than just we could probably maps show that off. I think when you launch this, hopefully this actually works um, on the mangrove level. Let's hope this works. Um, we were messing around with the idea that these bridges here. Hey, it did. 
um, could be uh, optional. So in the standard layout of this of this map, these bridges are actually here, but we can. There's four of them. There's one uh, one here, one here, and then the other two are actually in this layout. This one here and this one here, and so we can now dynamically um, turn those bridges on or off. And it sort of is, extends beyond just the bridges too. Like we can, like modify large parts of the layout. We can put more blockers in. Uh, there are like these cover, these obscuring, um, these reeds that you can run into. Brad, you said those reeds, uh, you weren't feeling, like are they still tempish? Are they still? Oh, they're very temp, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we need to do like an actual model for them. But the, That's what um, I thought, yeah. The feel of them is is very good. That you was know. a dick statement. Just like, you know what? Fuck you. My reads are whole, awesome. How's that sound? Yeah, I spent a whole like five minutes on making that thing. Uh, <laughs> true fact: five minutes of Jeff Soul's time is about five hundred thousand uh, dollars. It's insane. <laughs> I, I know, wish. I don't know. That oh studio my god! I wish. He's that good. He's but that yeah, good. I think it's I think it's working really well for gameplay to have these things, and we can totally have different layouts of them on the map. Yeah. And then we can mix and match those with spawn points and stuff. We have a system that le like, lets us do that. And that's really like in the tweaking and tuning phase that we'll do, like just making sure that there are like dozen, uh, about a dozen layouts, maybe more. It just kind of depends on how long it takes, how long it takes to test them as well, and, and we'll see yeah. in the future. But I think that's going to be that's going to be really cool as we find more opportunities to have features of the map that can either be there or not be there because we can do it with any object, right? Yep. It's it's like literally any object. We could just we could pull some of these roots off. We could we could rip trees out. We could do. I mean, if we wanted to get real want. crazy, we could change the entire level. Like yeah. rip the ground right, out. Take it easy. Like, <laughs> your producer's sitting right here. <laughs> Negatory. Um, so that's fantastic. Uh, the other thing that we've been doing um, lately, I have to mute this. <laughs> the other thing that we've been doing lately is, uh, what do we have over here, is that you've been working on the actual uh, demon armor. Oh, yeah. So this is awesome that this is the, the first piece of, uh, of, of Cadence armor that we have in the game for the Caber Jack. So this is based off of the Bone Shell um, character. And yeah, this is awesome that like this just you just modeled this guy yesterday, right? And this is yep. like the the kind of normal when he's normally wearing it. Now, one question: Have we talked about getting the the house colors onto this, or was it was more the idea? I remember when we talked well, about when it I was originally. talking to yeah, when I was talking to Derek, he's like, "You guys didn't want house colors on it, but I put some in there anyway." Because is it is it in the brown? <laughs> he's area? got a, he's got no he's got a like a little sh like arm stripe. That little white right stripe here. This over white there piece be, will actually then, be um, colored with the house color. The the secondary class. Shoulder pad will have that, house color on it. That will be right. there, and that yeah. one. So, it'll, okay, so cool. all the house color will be contained around the left shoulder. That's cool. post alpha type thing, like yeah, post early access. Sure, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just like I just make the magic happen. I don't know when it happens. And so this is the you know just like the enemy. Like I I love the Mega Man ness of this of of this feel. Like just like the enemy, the, when you get That's hit, sick. you'll get this uh, kind of bone shell collar thing that that pops up, um, and then here's the back of it. And like this is yeah, this is looking super sweet. Like I'm, I'm, I'm super stoked to. I like the fact that it has like a very uh, turtle shell vibe to it, um, the because like the like the grid system on it, and then like like the the pallets on top of like if you go before the bone shell kicks in, like <laughs> it's kind of sweet. <laughs> Did you just call it a boner shell? No, the bone <laughs> shell before the bone shell kicks in. No, the the Roman the Roman uh, legions would call they would form the testudo, which is the, yeah, the turtle yeah, shell, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what it reminds me of, like. It was an homage. Dear Diary, Jeff hates my ideas. That's all <laughs> I, I got to say. I love your ideas. Today. Except for that one in the chalice room with the colors and the rivers and stuff. That was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's true. That was a really bad idea in hindsight. That was a really bad idea in hindsight. But, you know, sometimes pee water isn't the best idea for a chalice room. And, you know, I, it took you guys to show me the light. And I, I appreciate so we've still, <laughs> So we've you. still got um, uh, the other two... Cadence armors to model for the hunter and the alchemist. Yep. And then we've got the uh, all of the cadence weapons, and that's going to be the primarily you know one of the big focuses of next month uh, for like our three D art is to make sure that like our armory is like all totally loaded. Yeah. Hopefully our character. Yeah. We we'll get rid of all of the temp stuff. That. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be awesome. Be nice. Yeah. I, think, I can't believe how quickly everything's just coming together like so fast right now. It's amazing. It's well, amazing. It's really good. <laughs> it turns out we're working with the, the cream of the crop professionals on this project. <laughs> Even, and by the by, uh, my pee water idea was fucking amazing. <laughs> amazing. Brad shot it down, you shot it, and rightfully it so. It takes a lot for me to get rid of something about pee in our games. I mean, like... <laughs> <laughs> Is there... Um, yeah, so anything else going on, Jeff, that you want to... 
We did a bunch of screenshots. Yeah, that's right. We did a, a bunch of screenshots. Uh, we're going to be in Game Informer. We yeah. didn't tell anybody that, but yeah, we're going to be in... Shh, don't yeah, tell them about first. our advertising. Oh, my it God. With, we're going to be in something called Rhymes with Game Informer. Yeah. James... Uh, Name and Murmur. Yeah. Uh, we'll be in that. That'll be awesome in a couple months. Uh, they'll have some screenshots and a write-up and everything about that. That'll be it's cool. It's going to be amazing. Uh, it's going to be great. I think that everyone is actually starting to get more and more inebriated as this uh, team stream goes on. I'm like, what are you trying to yeah. say, Mjorn? Chad, Chad's <laughs> been drinking some stuff. Let's check in on Chad one more time. We got one last code to give out, too, after we, we talk to Chad. If you're we cool certainly with that. map we haven't seen yet. It, uh, Jeff's been working on this one. There's a few graphics glitches, but also some awesomeness. Oh, My yeah. favorite is this bridge oh, yeah. piece. Ooh, yeah. The, the fancy blue ring. Jeff is the master of bridges at Devil Fine. I don't know if you know this. Oh, uh, God. What's your oh, first man. bridge claim to fame, Jeff? Uh, the, there, were, there had to have been a bridge in Psychonauts, right? That you. That you yeah, there, there was a bunch in Basic Raining. Yep. Uh, I think I built one yep. in the camp, too. Uh, yep. Yeah. And then uh, the infamous yeah, the infamous. bridge. The, the intro the bridge. bridge for yeah, is the, the, the Brutal Legend Bridge yeah. uh, at the beginning of the game that you're racing over in the deuce. That, yes. uh, Speaking of that, there was an amazing quote. Uh, that I totally forgot that I said about how I used some of Drew's elf blood to get that thing actually working. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, were you drinking each other? Because that's quite my way to Probably. Remember. Probably. <laughs> this is the hunter. He's got the new stealth, ar stealth armor. So you nice. see now everywhere he can move. Oh, yeah. Look at that. All the little stars. And what do those stars mean, Chad? They're just some programmer art I put in to indicate where you can stealth to. Usually you have to stealth next to something tall. But with the hunter armor, you can stealth anywhere you want, That's anywhere amazing. he can move. So, actually, it's not super effective because he's behind the lines here. But I'll stealth him up. So, for example, if this was a Vaughn hunter who was not asthmatic, you probably wouldn't kill him off, would you? <laughs> <laughs> just FYI, I just it's question. It. random question. Anthony, he got the he got that Vaughn to level six. I know that's true. Yeah. That is badass. I shouldn't. I do not. The guy had bare strength. You know, like oh, so this is excellent. Oh. I don't know if we've ever shown this. Um, one of these, uh, the, the giant growth cadence actually shoots out little tiny growth cadence. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I won't kill them and show you what's happened when you don't kill them. Do you always get uh, happen? Uh, <laughs> it doesn't always happen, but uh, I will instead move my stealth guy up a bit. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, who do I got here? He'll go after the big guy. Oh man, that you can see he's getting old. That dude's looking pretty old, man. Yeah. Erwin uh, Hackett, Erwin age Hackett. 61. Um, <laughs> Zero. His brother, oh, man, look at this heart. guy. <laughs> this guy doesn't care. He's young at heart. Young at heart with arthritis. Does that we heart disease though? That feels, he, could. he could go any day. Oh, any, any moment. <laughs> he's got heart disease Chad. and he's 61. This guy's not gonna be long for this world. We'll that is unfortunate. Happens. This is his younger brother. Bert Hackett, 44. Can see, doesn't I'm quite sport in the beard, Hackett. but has that uh, golden blonde, I guess. He's quick, so we'll just leave him there. <laughs> see what see what happens. This guy's gonna try to lob a grenade over, hit this nice patch oh, that of seems guys good. over here, right? So uh, I think right there maybe. With oh, and he missed, okay. but he hit he one of guy. them a little bit. Um, yeah, we'll just end the turn. Maybe this guy will spit out another one. <laughs> well, oh, no. Nope. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll pull back. Um, we're get, seeing some of the um, harder enemies to fight. Um, this uh, age swipe guy, or we mentioned a new possible oh, name yeah, for him. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think we're going to be calling those wrinklers. Yeah. Because they, nice. make you, they make you older as they, uh, as they damage you. So, yeah, that'll be awesome. Hey, guys, while you're watching Chad, a quick update. We're up to about 60 pending submissions on the Bloodline Editor. That's fantastic. Really cool. It's a, good, it's a good surge. Man, I love that, that people were, like, ready, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Yes. I can't wait to, like, go through those and stuff. I that bet. will be excellent. All right, so, um, Jeff, thanks for joining us. Yeah. You Just are a final guest. Um, we're going to... We're gonna go to. Yeah, we should all go drink after this. I I, I believe that's go, gonna happen. It might happen, Brad. Oh, will it actually? Will it actually go off? Oh, oh god, that guy dead. just uh, got ended. Chad, this is terrible. 
it's a fitting ending to my <laughs> to my game, but uh, we might see the growth guys form up. Yeah, that would be excellent. I would love to. I would love to see that. Yep, there, there they go. There they go. They're gonna combine to form a big fat uh, so, one. I love oh, that. Excellent. It's so good. Excellent. He looks fine. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. He's all vibrating. Yes. I love that's working. You're lucky that Vaughn guy is still alive, really or I'd run away. All right, so um, we're gonna we got one more trailer. A game near and dear to my heart. Uh, first game that both Jeff and I worked on here. Uh, it is for the original Psychonauts. So did you guys come in like like mid development, early development, late development? Like when would you, when did you guys like with Psychonauts like timeline? When did you I, guys? I was like the last uh, eighteen months. That's awesome. Yeah, that's I, awesome. Ish, maybe a little longer. So and then last, Jeff was there last for last quarter of the project. Most of it. Jeff is actually seventy two years old. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> yes. I don't, my cells don't amazing. die, so that's why I look so young. Yeah, that's no, cool. Uh, that's super cool. I, I came in when they were rebooting it for the first time. Okay, And gotcha. I think we rebooted it like four times or something like that. I don't know. There were a lot of, a lot of redos. Some games just need it, You know, man. fifth yep. time's the charm, yep. you know? Yep. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, Absolutely. it pays. It, it pays, though. Yep. That's a quality product. That's it super is. cool. All right, let's roll that trailer. My name is Rasputin, but everybody calls me Raz. You're late, soldier. Now get in here and give me 20. From this day forward, you are all psychic soldiers, paranormal paratroopers, mental marines who are about to ship out on the adventure of their lives. They told me this was a summer camp. <laughs> that lake isn't as peaceful or as harmless as she looks. I think there are several fishy things that need psychic investigating. You think you're more advanced than me, new kid? He's completely brainless. The dream was true. Lily, they stole Dogen's brain. This is an honest-to-goodness psychic emergency. I wonder, could the old legends be true? This will only hurt until your brains come flying out. Welcome to my mind. I need killers. I need angry brains. Powerful human child. What a delightfully mean little brain you have. Huh? Who are you working for? I'm gonna kill you so much. Lily, a deranged man-man is building an army of psychic death tanks to take over the world. And there's no one who can stop him, except for you and me. Oh my god! Let's make out! <laughs> You shall engage the enemy in his own mentality. You shall chase his dreams. You shall fight his demons. You shall live his nightmares. And those of you who fight well, you will find yourselves on the path to becoming international secret agents. In other words, Psychonauts!
back with audio. That's what Paul just said. Paul Dubois <laughs> is not here anymore. We'll totally. Thanks, Dan. Good watch. catch. Oh, sorry. All right, good. No, no, that's perfect. Oh. Yeah, post the link to the that. editor that they can use and upgrade from there. Um, shit is breaking. Hey, we're back. Um, thanks for joining us for this like kind of ridiculous like three-hour extravaganza as we're uh, we've just been you know just been celebrating twelve months of working on this crazy video game uh, thanks to you guys. So um, I thought to close it out, we would show off a few more of these sigils, give away our last $100 uh, code, um, courtesy of Mark Kalinick. Did I get it right that time? Kalinick. Kalinick. Yeah. Ah, it's a rough, it's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I thought we would, Anthony is going to be feeding me some, uh, some submitted bloodlines. So I check this one out. This is the Banalanos bloodline. Their motto is see all and take all. That's kind of Also, cool. could you also... Murder someone, could you imagine yourself saying, we see your doom when you murder them? Because that's what's gonna happen when you play Master Joss. Like, you're gonna, you're gonna... But like, just to role play this for a second, you just kill me, you're about to like knife yeah. your throat, and you're like, we see your doom. That's pretty awful. That is some hardcore yeah. shit <laughs> coming at your face, That is man. some dark shit. Also, could you imagine if that gentleman's name was Luigi? <laughs> that just stabbed you. <laughs> Luigi can and you, Stefana. Can you imagine if your last words were, damn you Luigi. <laughs> damn you Luigi. Uh, so super awesome. I totally love the sigil. It's, it's incredible. It's like, like the four eyes on the squid, and I, it's awesome. I'm, like, I'm so excited to like review all of these. and like, like This is a great example of something. like This will absolutely be accepted into the game. In the, uh, so to explain to you guys, if you haven't read the fact, it's like we're going to have two buckets of bloodlines that we accept, ones that we, we feel are thematically appropriate, and then ones that we feel like we're going to accept, but they're a little silly, they're a little weird, they're a little too, you know... Um, they reference things of like the modern era, whatever. There are a lot of things that will make us feel like, oh, that's not really thematically appropriate for, uh, for Master Chalice. So we can just mark them as not thematically appropriate. And then when people start playing, uh, start a new playthrough of the game, they'll be able to choose whether or not they want um, the thematic uh, bloodlines, the non-thematic bloodlines, or both. Right. Uh, you'll be able to choose one or the other of both, both, both. 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 Hey, Hoser. Both. You gonna go outside to drink and get a beer, cool? eh? Um, <laughs> I love. Can By the way, I love Canada. I didn't. I was not making fun of Canada there. I love Canada. All, all any, any and all Canadians watching this, I love you. Um, <laughs> Windsor's the best for a uh, nineteen-year-old person living yeah, in southeast in Detroit. Could, could you have, what? You have one guy in the battle. Okay, we're gonna cut back to Chad for one minute. We're gonna wrap this just up, I minute, swear. Everybody's what? dead, you can see I'm just- Everybody's dead? Like, yeah, we really had a bad run. Okay, you've got Camden Melian, two HP, no health potions. No grenades, potions. What no it, health potions, it, no grenades. How's he gonna he's, live through this? He's up against two guys. This is um, impossible, Chad. They can shoot through here. I How do you know. live through this? I'm gonna try to break down yeah. this wall. All right. And hopefully they'll hit these things or miss me. Camden was all like, we got it. this. I don't know if that was I smart. Don't, no, oh, dead. So I'm cutting see away. What happens when you wipe. I'm cutting away. Massive this defeat. Massive defeat. Oh man, everyone's vanquished. But, but there might be some relics. Oh yeah. Erwin Hackett. Look at all his family. Left behind a relic known as oh, unknown no. line code. <laughs> so that's a, that's a bug. <laughs> <laughs> His relic is known as Unknown Line Code. We might have to leave that one in. It's just too classic. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Maybe we, every once in a while we should have a relic known as Unknown Line Code. So who gets it? Look at all these hackets that you have. You got a lot of eligible Ooh, Chad hackets. Oh, Chad Hackett. He's got to be. He's Kingmaker. He's cool. Brad Hackett. Also Kingmaker. Oh, you got to give it to Brad. John Hackett. Mm. Okay, that's way better. Longevity. Let's give it to him. Yeah, that's the guy 32. to give it to. He's ready. Unknown line code. There was only one. Only one out of that group. Man. It's a sad okay. day. Anthony, do we have some more some more of these to share? Uh, I think so. Give me one minuto. What have you been doing over there? I've been trying to find <laughs> some amazing bloodlines. Got this. Hold on a second. Boom. And then uh, if everybody could start spamming that chat uh, for our final... Final bloodline code, we will uh, send that out shortly. That would be awesome. That would be great. That would be perfect. 
Um, you got one here? As I am. I think there was one more coming to you. Are you pasting Boom. something? I'm working on it. It's awesome. Oh, we've had, uh, Anthony told me we've had over 60 submissions already, just like over the course of the show. So it's awesome. Like it's we're gonna, crazy. We're going to review those um, probably over the weekend. We'll review them uh, and get back to you guys. And then, uh, yeah. So I think it's going to boil down to like, you know, me and you, let's like tag team in that, just like, you know, as best we can. It's going to be awesome. And Brad, one more coming to you. Boom. Uh, oh, sorry. That was from my... Do you, do you have me on... Uh... It did not. Oh, you know what? Hold on. I got this. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, you're right. It's We're going to get... I, I, the way I see it is we're going to get a huge like surge up front with a bunch of codes, but uh, people really don't get motivated, I think, until like they know, like, oh, now it's live. Now I could be in the game. And then we saw this happen just yesterday. Like, people just started flooding us with, with ideas on, like, how they could... Uh, how they could uh, uh, get in the game, yada yada. Oops, excuse me, don't click that link. That's my email link. Uh, is this working? It is. Sort of. I haven't seen anything that you've done recently. I know, it's weird. <laughs> I had to install, okay, look at this, here it is, coming right now at okay. you. Boom. Oh, wait, oh, as a bug? I'm not sure. I'll have to talk to Dan. Interesting. Interesting. Well, well, you know what? Work in progress. Work in progress. <laughs> Work in we'll progress. check that out. All right, so this is... What about that guy, Brad? Nope. Did that come through? Nope. Oh, no way. Nope. We're having a little technical difficulty. Yeah. Oh, that's a bummer. That's cool. You know what? Let's not worry about it. Cool. Let's give away this last code and shut it down. What do you say? Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Yeah. Pick somebody. How about right... Now. Right now. Right eh? now. That would be going to Turtle Spark. Turtle yeah! Spark. Turtle Spark. $100 copy of Master Bell. Thanks. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in to this uh, kind of nuts. So, <laughs> kind of nuts. Um, team stream. Uh, thanks to Two Player Productions for, uh, for helping us put this thing together. Uh, thank you, Anthony Vaughn, for sitting here. Riding the wheels of steel. Yeah, it's been working out great. Keeping everything going. Um, thanks to Chad for playing the game the whole time. And for, you know, programming uh, the video game. Another game. Yeah, thanks to all our guests. Um, and thanks to you guys for backing the game. Uh, we really couldn't have been able, you know, none of this would have been possible without you guys. So uh, thank you so much. Thanks. So we'll see you in another couple weeks. Team Stream 22. Um, I promise I'll keep Anthony away from the whiskey. And that one will be very <laughs> that was very nice, I swear. The whiskey was not my <laughs> so, so we'll see you in a couple more weeks. Uh, thanks for tuning in. See you guys. <laughs> this is where Paul says we're clear.